Welcome to the Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode. Now, before we get on with this week's episode, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to all of the wonderful, wonderful comments from last week's video. Last week's video was about me opening my very own YouTube studio slash hair salon. And um, I just thought I'd put it out there and I didn't expect for one second the kind of response that I got from you guys. So an enormous thank you as always. Now this week's video is another one where things quite don't go to plan. And um, I did a video a bit like this a few weeks ago and uh, you know I've decided to make videos about things that don't always go to plan. And you know it's it's not necessarily a hugely common reoccurring thing. You know these are these are videos that I've collected and the first one I put out there is, was kind of an experiment to see how you guys responded to it. And you guys responded really well and seemed to enjoy that style of episode. So I'm going to make another one. Now this one, there's a very, very obvious reason for this one not going to plan. Once you actually get into it and start talking about it, I was aware of it. But um, I'm sure you can probably start to work it out for yourself in just a second. So have a wonderful week, guys. Thanks again. If you're new here, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more content around the hairdressing industry. My future videos will be from my new studio. We're not quite there yet. I've had a mad week. I haven't got back to many comments this week, but uh, if you do have a question, please leave it in the comments. And if I do have time, I will 100% get back to you. So until next time, guys, look after yourself and I'll see you again next time. This lovely client came to me with a scalp bleach, a scalp bleach that she had done one of two things. She had attempted to refresh her scalp bleach herself. And I know a lot of you out there will be now thinking, holy moly. Um, the other thing was that it had quite a long regrowth, didn't want to be blonde anymore. There was some damage in the hair. And so the big problem here was porosity and that's what's really caused some of the bigger issues that we see coming down the line. I'm going to show you how I dealt with that towards the end of the video but in the meantime we'll talk about root stretching and the technique that I was kind of taking on to tackle softening out and blending out the root area that the client came in with. Now a natural level six on the hair, uh, a very orangey yellow warm band going through the hair uh, and then into very, very light blonde. Now, obviously, a bit of a tricky situation, kind of need to cool down the warmth, uh, but obviously then we're going into very, very lightened hair. So I'm using a six natural beige, an NB shade in this particular instance. I'm painting down to the parietal ridge, the ridge that is above the ear, and to the top of the occipital bone in the back of the head. And then I'm using my comb at a 45 degree angle to distribute from glossy at the root with the colour. So you want to look for the colour looking very glossy, going into satin, going into matte. So that is the, the stretch. I've got a video all about it. I'll link it at the end of this one if you haven't seen it. It's a really good video to work out how to seamlessly bleed, blend, stretch, whatever you want to call it, the colour down without needing a secondary colour to blend with, if you like. You can just create beautiful transitions without the need of two products being rubbed together. Now, in the instance of this particular look, the ends wanted to be a little bit warmer. Um, she wanted a more kind of honey golden blonde towards the ends, the kind of bl extra blonde feel on her skin tone. Uh, was washing her out a little bit. So we've got that six natural beige shade going through that root area. Now, because we're dropping it down to a six, that's why we're not really worrying about that kind of yellowy gold band, because we're going to deepen it far enough that we're just going to blanket cover that. So that's not a problem. The natural beige is then going to go over the blonde and create a seamless transition, which you'll see at the end of this video. And then through the ends, I've got 9G, 09G for my colour um, with a little bit of um, 09P. Um, now the P 
is one of the things that's going to cause us some problems in this particular episode. Um, you'll start to see as it processes, and in fact you can see it a little bit now on the screen as we are applying, that it's starting to look a bit metallic-y um, in the front section on the right hand side um, next to the section that I'm working on. Now this is for um, reasons of which the colour is starting to sink and actually we don't have enough warmth present um, in the hair for it not to look flat and sludgy. So it's starting to go sludgy. I am aware of it but I'm kind of working out what's the best plan of action here knowing that I don't particularly obviously want to do anything to the ends as they're quite sensitised. So I'm kind of thinking, thinking, thinking on my feet, trying to uh, ascertain exactly what to do. Now I've used predominantly 9G, so you would have thought that that would be A-OK -okay and we wouldn't be getting this kind of slightly sludgy look that you can see on the screen now. In fact, some areas are quite warm and some areas are quite sludgy, as you can see. So the porosity is incredibly uneven and it's sinking and it's bringing out the uh, 09P. So back to the basins, the hair's sunk, it's definitely gone darker than a nine. I'm now in full repair mode. So I'm um, over to the basins and having thought about the best kind of approach here, um, I've decided to apply uh, bleach, pre-lightener, decolorizer, whatever name you want to call it, to the hair um, with 1.8%. Um, so I've gone in with my 1.8% and I'm simply going to do a freehand backwash balayage technique uh, where I just hand blend it up towards the root colour and start to melt the two colours together. Always make sure you do the back of each sections and make sure that you work the product through as if you were doing a full blown balayage. Now what this is going to do is going to start taking out some of that toner for me and it's really going to help save the day. Now I don't particularly want it to take all the toner out, what I just want it to do is knock it back a little bit. Um, if it goes warm then good because we were looking for a honey blonde anyway. So we're kind of just watching this, watching, watching, watching and lots and lots of colour corrections guys require an enormous amount of concentration time and fastidiously watching. I have seen so many times people doing colour corrections, popping on the colour and just walking away. And for me, that is a very, very treacherous thing to do indeed. Things can go incredibly wrong if you do that, because obviously things can change very quickly. Condition, tonal changes, all sorts of things can happen in a heartbeat in a colour correction scenario. So for me, you need to be really, really standing over it, watching and ensuring that everything's going in the right direction. So don't leave it to chance. Don't go and get a cup of tea. Bring it to you. If you want a cup of tea, if it's that desperate, bring it to you because the client's hair, as I'm sure you're aware, is more important than your cup of tea right now. Um, and don't get me wrong, I've been entire days without water, tea, food, you name it. You know what it's like as a hairdresser. Sometimes you have those days and this is one of those moments. I'd have loved to have left this on and just strolled away and come back and washed it off and it would have been beautiful. But no, it wasn't meant to be like that. It was very porous. I could have pre-treated the porosity, Olaplex, anything, any name of number of products out there to treat porosity prior to the colour application. And actually, in a nutshell, that was probably my problem from the consultation, really. I had underestimated the quality of the hair on the ends and the mixed porosity of her hair. Um, I thought Shades EQ, which I used in this particular episode, would cover all bases, but unfortunately it didn't. So you can see me in this particular instance, I'm really, really working on the blend. I'm really going to town on blending and saturating the hair. And as I'm saturating, I'm removing the bleach so I can see what is happening. And as soon as it starts to go kind of golden, I'm, I'm happy with that. Fantastic. You know, wonderful stuff. And it's starting to do that as I'm actually going through. It's actually going to the colour that I wanted it to be. It's going to that 9G type of colour. So I'm having a bit of a result here. Now, in some instances, I may have to have retoned the hair um, through the ends. Now, the root colour's obviously been on uh, for slightly longer than probably recommended time because we've been you know, dilly-dallying with the ends, but not much longer because I didn't leave it much longer after applying 
uh, those ends to go into the basin to fix it because I knew it wasn't going in the right direction. After five minutes, I decided we've really got to intervene here, step in and really help this client out because she's really not going to be pleased with that sludgy color that her hair was going. So here you can see finished result, beautiful blend through uh, from that root smudge shadow, root stretch, whatever you want to call it, uh, down towards her end color. And she's got that beautiful golden honey blonde that she was after. And the day is saved. You know, colors like this, where everything goes pear shaped, you learn from it. You learn from these things. I have learned more from making mistakes than I from doing things well. And believe you me, part of the reason that I'm sitting here now, part of the reason that I started making YouTube videos, part of the reason that I'm an educator in the first place is because I have probably made as many mistakes alone as all of you put together. So that is my mission, give you the foresight of time travel and hopefully you won't make the same mistakes that I have on my hairdressing journey. So if you've enjoyed this episode, please, please, please do me the massive favor of hitting that thumbs up button. It's always hugely appreciated because it helps the YouTube algorithm. Comments help that YouTube algorithm and you guys watching the video for as long as humanly possible. So if you're here right now, you are supporting the channel enormously. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll see you again next Sunday for another episode of Life and Hair.